Dear Rental Scale Up members, thank you for joining for this new session. Um, wait, mistake. Do you hear something else? Somebody talking or not? Yeah, you do. <laughs> Joe, you're working from home. All yes. right. So we're both are working. All right. Sorry. Let me do it. Stop this one. No, I can do it again. Okay. <clears throat> oh. Again. Dear Rental Scope members, thank you for joining us for this new session. Today, right now, we have Sarah Dupre. Sarah works for AirDNA, which is a data company. Uh, they know all about what's going on in the markets all around the world when it comes to short-term rental and short-term rentals and vacation rentals. So she'll be talking uh, to us about a few things, among which um, what situation is like for her. She's actually in Barcelona, as we know. Spain is a country that's been very much hit by the coronavirus. So having, as always, a local perspective brings a lot to us. And talking about local perspective, we'll also see that there's actually bookings happening right now in, in Barcelona. And she will tell us how, uh, through talking with property managers like you and looking at the data, they've been able to know what was going on. And then we'll talk about things like pricing. How do you price your properties right now? And you may think that you have usually helps from, let's say, dynamic pricing tools or from uh, tools like Airbnb spike pricing or Verbal's uh, market maker uh, pricing opportunities. And that these things maybe are not as reliable as they used to be because a lot of them are relying on historical data, right? Obviously, uh, this data does not, do not account for a global pandemic. So we'll see why they might be unreliable. And so we'll talk about what, which metrics you should be looking to right now, right? To, to understand what's happening now in your own market. So how can you spot recovery, right? How can you see the first signs? And, and that's when Sarah will basically also share with us uh, her screen to show us the tools that Adine has just developed to show you uh, the pace of the new, new bookings and other kind of very interesting information that's going to help you get a sense of control of the situation and be ready for the future. So Sarah, welcome. Thank you for taking the time. Thanks so much, Thibaut, for having me. <laughs> so as I say, you're, you're welcome. And as I say, you are in Barcelona right now. So can you, can you share about the situation for yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So um, in Barcelona, obviously, everybody's on lockdown. So we can only leave the house to go to the supermarket or pharmacy. Um, some select sectors in uh, construction and things can, can return to work. But uh, everybody that can work from home should. Um, I'm a bit lucky. Uh, I'm out in the countryside outside of uh, Barcelona, so I usually have a two hour commute, but now <laughs> I have a bit more peace and quiet than some of my colleagues, so I'm um, quite lucky. Um, I think it's just about like everybody else, staying positive, staying home, staying as connected as we can uh, through, you know, online video conferencing and things like that. So um, there, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, that's for sure. <laughs> And, uh, and you talk about staying connected. I think what I've been very impressed with is that um, by two things, right? First, uh, property managers are still reaching out to you, right? They're still telling you what's happening right now. And second, that your own team, uh, I guess it's uh, uh, you're based in Barcelona, there's probably people in London, in the US. You've also been able to get together to develop new tools. So can you first maybe tell us about how the local markets, what do you know, what's going on for property managers right now in Barcelona? Yeah, absolutely. So, so the first thing that, that we looked at, of course, uh, nobody was prepared for a global pandemic. Uh, none of our tools and models and algorithms were built for that. Um, and so that was sort of the first thing that hit us was, hey, we really need to, to speak with our data partners, speak with our, our property management clients and see what's really happening out there um, and see how that's reflected in the data. And so uh, one of the interesting things that we noticed is that we were actually seeing bookings. Our algorithm was picking up bookings. We were seeing it. Uh, in the in the, some of the data anonymized data we received through our data partnerships and we were a bit perturbed so we called up some of our property management clients and said hey guys are you actually getting bookings or are we missing the mark 
Um, and happily, uh, they actually were receiving bookings. So um, we talked to uh, several different clients in areas where we were seeing an increase. One of those, of course, was in Barcelona. Um, and uh, when we rang up uh, our, our property managers, they said, yes, so we are receiving bookings uh, mainly for two reasons in Barcelona. Uh, the first was that uh, on day one, they had uh, some of them had taken the initiative to go down to the hospitals <laughs> and stand outside of the health centers. And as they saw uh, perhaps family members or even doctors and nurses, people that were going to be there for a while, uh, looking for a place to, to stay in the city. Maybe they live outside the city. They didn't want to commute. Perhaps they have family members that are, that are vulnerable and don't want to be uh, at home while they're attending to, to sick patients. Uh, so they offered up the, some of the flats that they had, of course, with the permission of the owners, uh, to help the healthcare workers. And so um, right off the bat, they had several bookings coming from uh, people in the healthcare sector. And then also in Barcelona, they saw a huge uptick in people looking for a quiet place to work. So, um, you know, everybody's working from home, but obviously if you have, um, you know, like some of my colleagues, maybe three kids that are not in school right now, uh, and uh, you and your partner are both trying to work, it can be difficult. So for those uh, that are lucky enough to have some additional hands and additional help to look after the kids, uh, they were renting out flats to, to go work from uh, and have a safe environment to do that. Um, the other um, group we looked at where we saw a huge spike was in the Hamptons. So we saw something like 300% year over year growth uh, in the Hamptons and thought, oh, this can't be right. And we rang up. Um, it was true. Uh, you know, all of the property managers we spoke to there said that absolutely when, when the virus started hitting uh, New York City fairly hard in the beginning of uh, March, they saw a huge influx of, of bookings of people trying to get out of the city. Uh, you know, the kids were out of school. People were working remotely. Um, and so they figured it was better to do that in a, in a mansion in the Hamptons than, than stuck in a three bedroom flat in Manhattan. So, um, you know, it, it, was, uh, it was good to see. It's nice to see people taking initiatives, uh, particularly like those we saw in Barcelona, where they're just old school camping outside of the hospitals <laughs> to offer accommodation. Um, and then in the Hamptons, of course, people um, seeing this huge influx due to this quarantine tourism that we like to call it. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's, it's, uh, these are very interesting what you're saying. There's people, basically, there's medical staff trying to find uh, lodging. There's the people who want to work away from home because it's, they want some quietness. Uh, and also the other thing is, is uh, the, this quarantine tourism. And it, again, if, if, you, if, uh, if people watching us have never been to the RDNA website, there's also a great blog with resources. And there was a very nice article, super clear graphs, about the main destinations for this that was seeing these spikes. And I was, I was wondering whether, because I'm always trying to think, think okay, what's, what happened next when these uh, stay-at-home uh, uh, bans or stay-at-home orders are lifted? Do you think that could be maybe a, the, few, the first places where people actually go to now because that's where they, they went right before the crisis, so maybe that's where they want to go because they think these are the safe places that they want to reach. Is it, can we look at this kind of data like this? Does it make sense? Yeah, I, th I think, I mean, I think it's definitely something to consider. And as well, um, you know, I think perhaps tourism in some way may be more localized for a while. So, I mean, of course, if everybody's in lockdown, I mean, here, particularly in Spain, um, I was planning on going to Italy for holiday this year. Well, I probably won't because I may not be able to get out of Spain, but I might be able to go up the coast or maybe 45 minutes from my house and just get away for a few days. So um, definitely we're going to be seeing, I think, more localized tourism at first. Um, that's going to be the first market to recover is going to be the domestic market. Um, and then, uh, and then the international tourism. So uh, it's going to be a lot more focused on on that. I think, um, of course, people who have been out quarantining, they may just stay there, uh, depending on how long <laughs> things last. I mean, maybe people went out to the Hamptons, I'm sure, for uh, thinking it was going to be a week or two, and it's now turned into uh, just over a month and and counting. So uh, for sure, I think we can see um, some interesting trends there. And, and looking to the, the, the trend you talked about, you know, probably uh, like domestic travel, drive to destinations would be the first ones to recover or just us trying to visit if you are, um, uh, if you live in a different country or, or in a different area of the, your own country, trying to visit friends and family. Mm -hmm. um, but also uh, looking to your point, right, uh, in these, these videos, we also have Adele, who's in uh, property manager in Budapest and uh, Andrew, who's a property manager in Bali. And both of them, for example, talk about digital, digital nomads who basically 
need it need now to find a place either to ride down the storm or just they're stranded there. Uh, we talked about with uh, Andrew about um, Russian travelers for whom it's very hard to get back to Russia. So they now they have they're in Bali for at least one month or two. So there's there's real demand happening. Some bookings are happening now. And again, we'll be talking about this with the how to see this through data, right? For the bookings looking looking forward, but. Um, we have to look forward because probably historical data may or may not make sense, right? Uh, so uh, I tried to write an article on, on the blog, and I think you've read this, uh, the blog article, and when you said this, I was like, internally, I was like, oof, I hope I was right, because, you know, when you're not a data specialist, I've learned really to be humble about that because I know I could get things wrong, so I'm always the first to say, that's, what, that's how I see it. If I'm wrong, do tell me, I will correct things. So. My perception, and again, I want to hear from you. My perception is that a lot of dynamic pricing tools, so for people who don't know this, is these tools that can enable you to, let's say, automate your pricing in one way or just give you some, some kind of uh, insights about where it's going to go and then you can take your own decision to adapt your pricing to know what's going on. For example, they will tell you that's a big event coming, coming mm -hmm. up and you have to raise your prices or that kind of things. <clears throat> so these, these tools... Um, may not be working anymore because obviously if they built on his, historical historical trends, let's say that every year there's a, you know, a big telecom conference, mobile conference in Barcelona, I think. So around those dates goes up. Obviously, if a big event like this gets canceled this year, this trend will not be happening, happening anymore. And so if, if the tool, I think these tools are smarter than this, but if the tool would just go and predict uh, oh wow, that weekend you have to increase your prices even though the event has been canceled, that doesn't make sense. So, um, and I think we have tools even for people who don't necessarily use third-party tools like, you know, uh, I think there's Beyond Pricing, there's Price Lab, Wheelhouse. I think even at DNA you have your own uh, pricing recommendation solution. But uh, Airbnb, for example, has its smart pricing uh, tool or Verbo has in the market maker also um, pricing opportunities uh, to tell you uh, what to do. So there's a lot of things actually that we don't think about, but all these tools either in, in the platforms or third-party tools are relying partly on historical data. And I was like, oh, maybe they don't make sense anymore. So what does an expert like you think, Sarah? Yeah, let's be honest. I mean, everybody had uh, a pricing tool out and for us even it was an absolute shambles. I mean, uh, the model was the model was built, as you mentioned, mostly on historical data. Um, so, of course, we're taking into account what's happening in the future, what the booking pace is. Um, but there was a lot of that that uh, didn't make sense. I mean, I think this is evidence to happen across the board. You, you see Airbnb uh, and their smart pricing as well as uh, Verbo's market maker and, and they've uh, essentially disabled it from many locations just saying, sorry, we're not giving pricing updates right now because nobody can really get it right. Um, and so what we did is we really sort of scrambled to think and, and chat with customers and, and property managers and say, what can we provide you with that would be helpful? Because obviously, Pricing based on what happened in the past is not good enough anymore. You need to know what's happening in the future, how quickly things are going to pick up, and then, of course, comparing that with what happened in the past to see when are things going to come back to normal. When is where things were in the past and where they're at now, when is that going to converge again? And so that's really what we um, have tried to do. We've launched a, you know, a new pacing uh, section of our, of our online dashboard. And, um, yeah, I mean, if you want, I can pop in. Yeah, exactly. Let, let's pop in. So let's let's so what start with. So let's start with defining what pacing is, uh, because it might not be. Again, it's uh, um, like I actually I, I googled definition when writing my article. I'm like, I want to get it right, right? And it's again, it's metrics like this who've been around forever in revenue management for for hotels, for vacation rentals, but we may not all be using this every day. So that could be. I think that's what I find really good as well. Like actually, if you go on the on the tools that RDNA has, there's little definitions popping up, which are really helpful as well. So let's get into the presentation and and and, uh, and define all this. I think it's probably clearer with the, the graphs. So yeah, absolutely. So let me pop on my uh, my screen share here. Um, I will tell you, it's a uh, it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot more simple than it sounds, pacing. So it sounds like a big word, uh, but really all it means is what happened, what's happening right now and what happened at the same time last year and how do those two compare? So um, are you able to see my screen now, Thibaut? Yeah, perfect. 
Wonderful. Awesome. So uh, you'll take a, a look at Barcelona. Um, so this future demand analysis is a graph that we've had for a while. Um, and on the back of that, we've essentially gone in and uh, developed some additional graphs to, to help our property management clients specifically. Um, so on the future demand analysis, really what we've, we've always been tracking is the number of listings that are available versus booked on any given day over the next six months. Um, and then as well, what the median booked rate is. So um, this is just tracking purely future data. Um, so on any given day, you can come in and see what the occupancy rate is. Of course, you have up here as well, you know, as you mentioned, this with the bookable listing. So you've got the little icon that says, hey, this is the number of listings that were uh, or are available to be booked over the next 30 days. So it's the, av the daily average of available listings. And, um, this, and this data, Sarah, is available for uh, many markets, right? We're showing Barcelona here, but obviously we talked about Bali, and I said I have access because I'm a subscriber to to buy data. So, is how many are you covering covering the whole world? Or? We are. So we collect data on every single Airbnb and Verbo listing worldwide. Um, you can come onto our website, type in uh, the name of a city or an area. Um, we offer the access by city or sometimes by neighborhood or zip code. Um, so you can come on the website and search. If you don't find it, um, write us an email or pop up on the chat. Uh, it may be that we have it classified as something else or it may be that we need to add it uh, so that you can access your area. So um, if we don't already have it defined, we'll, uh, we'll get to work on that. <laughs> but we are collecting the data, so it's all there. Um, so I think what's, uh, what's really interesting is, of course, this is what we started with, right? This is what we knew. We knew what was happening in the future. But what we didn't know is, how does that compare with the same time last year? So that's when we developed uh, the next two graphs that I'm gonna take you through. So, um, of course, you've got uh, some tracking here. You can, you can use this slider to go uh, at different points in time and, and home in on, on specific, uh, specific dates. So one of the things that, that we noticed, um, and I know that you were mentioning this to me about, uh, about the Bali market earlier, Tivo, um, is that we're getting to a point now where we're seeing that the median booked rate, so this is the 50th percentile, uh, is actually higher than the median available rate uh, in nearly all cases um, for, the, for the next several months. Uh, the, the reason that we think this is due to is to a reduction in supply. So one of the things that we noticed, if we, if we come to the top, we've got 369 uh, bookable listings. Uh, but if we go to the same time last year and we look at the available listings for May, you're looking at 654. So it's nearly half the supply that you had at the same time last year. So that's one of the things that's influencing this. Um, and then, of course, the pacing component uh, really comes in when we analyze what's happening now, what's the median booked rate compared with the same time last year. So if we pop off the available rate and pop on the median booked rate, I'll slide this out so we can see a little bit farther into the future to see. Oh, there we go. So really what we're looking for here is that convergence that we talked about earlier. So this light green line above is the, the booked rate for the previous year, which is currently above what it is right now. The dark green line is the, 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 the booked rate right now. Um, so what, we're, what we really want to focus on are the points in time and the moments where these lines start to come together again, which if we go in a bit closer, we see it's really starting to happen depending on the market sometime uh, in May. I know in the case of Bali uh, that we looked at uh, earlier today, in Bali it's nearly, it's above that. Anytime after May, the, the, the current booked rate uh, is above the rate of that last year. So that indicates a, a really interesting recovery pattern in Bali that seems to be a little bit um, quicker <laughs> than in some other markets. Um, but for sure, this is information that property managers can use, not only to um, to understand when things are going to get better, but so that they know how they should prepare for when that happens, um, so that you're not left behind. And then if we pop down below, of course, everybody's asking, that's great, book rates are great, but when do these happen, right? And so that's, of course, one of the, one of the things we need to look at uh, would be, are these book rates in some cases higher because people have booked maybe three months ago when the pandemic wasn't uh, at the state it is now. So below what we've got is a way that you can track that. So for any given day, you can see how many of the reservations that have been made were made during the last 60 days, 30 days, and seven days, right? 
Um, so, of course, I mean, the seven days, it's always going to be the, the lowest figure. <laughs> um, but that is, that is normal. We have um, some points of comparison here. So, for example, if we were to, to look at the booking lead time that is, that is typical for uh, the Barrio Gothic in Barcelona, in this case in May, we've got an average of 77 days uh, historically, right? With 10% uh, of bookings happening during seven days before the date of stay, right? So, so it is still representative, I would say, of, of what we're seeing now, even into the future. I mean, the majority of these bookings are, are not happening within seven days. Most of these have come beforehand. Um, and so the really interesting trend here to track will be seeing when that starts to recover, when we start seeing that there are more bookings happening in the last seven days. And then, of course, when we're seeing that the number of bookings happening in the last 30 days or 60 days are, are growing, um, combined with, of course, the, the median booked rates and those converging with that of last year. And a, a quick question on this, on, on the booking trends. Uh, it's been very clear. Um, so the booking trends, for example, if you look at the, um, uh, let's say, um, I guess um, April, uh, before May, right? We can see there's a huge drop for the, um, for the booking trends, the, um, the graph, uh, the below graph, the graph below. Um, there's a huge drop, yeah, at some point that we see in uh, before even early May that happened even for the bookings recorded in the last 60 and 30 days, right? It's like uh, at some point, huge cliff down. So is it, how should I read? Should I read like even like 30 days, 60 days ago, people were stopping booking for May, for example? That's, that's how I should read it? Yeah, I, I mean, I think this is a really interesting one that really we're going to have to look at probably over the next two weeks in order to have a bit more of an accurate picture. Uh, because in this, in this case, we're talking about Barcelona, uh, the city center of Barcelona, where the state of emergency was only declared, it was almost exactly 30 days ago today. Um, and so obviously in a week, another week from now or two weeks from now, we're going to have a completely different scenario in terms of what's happening over the last 30 days. That's going to be a little bit more accurate picture of the post COVID world. Um, but, but we're definitely getting there. So, so I think this is something that we're, that we're really trying to track is seeing how many of those bookings really took place. Um, because what's interesting is that you see that, of course, these are cumulative. So the number of bookings that took place in the, in the last 60 days includes those that took place in the last 30 days, mm. for example, right? So what you're noticing is that actually in the last 30 days, 71 of okay. these bookings, took, of, the, of the total of 76 within the last 60 days took place. So it is still quite a high percentage um, that was happening in the last 30 days. So some of this could be what we were mentioning earlier of people who have been uh, booking out for either some sort of quarantine tourism or for healthcare workers, um, people looking for places to work from. Um, but the but the interesting figure to keep an eye on will be that seven day bookings. Obviously, particularly you know Airbnb and and Verbo tend to have a little bit shorter uh, booking lead times than maybe some other platforms. Um, this will somewhat be destination specific as well. City destinations like Barcelona tend to have uh, shorter booking lead times than maybe more holiday destination markets that are on the seaside or up in the mountains, for example. Mm. And a uh, last question on, 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 the, on the graphs in general. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked earlier about bookings made, let's say, uh, off the platform, right? Bookings made off Airbnb, off Verbo, like we, talk, we, we talked about, you know, uh, maybe uh, property managers going out in the street and, and getting bookings from, uh, from nurses, or maybe they got bookings on the phone. Uh, are these bookings also recorded uh, within AirDNA? Yeah, absolutely. So, so actually, this is one of the main reasons that we reached out to uh, some of our property management clients here in Barcelona and up in the Hamptons when we saw the spikes in our own data um, in terms of reservations. So uh, just a bit about how our information works. What we're doing is we're collecting um, data for every single property that's listed on either Airbnb or Verbo worldwide. Uh, and what we're reporting on is the holistic performance of each property. So regardless of where a booking takes place, um, the signals of what makes up a booking looks the same to us. Our medium to larger sized um, 
property managers are using a channel manager. So this is automatically connected, even if the booking takes place uh, offline or on their own platform. Um, and then the second element of that is that even if they're smaller, uh, they're going in and blocking out the calendar so that they're not double booked um, at the same time. So it really doesn't matter. Um, we are still picking up those bookings. Uh, and that's, uh, yeah, as I said, one of the main reasons we launched our, our campaign, campaign to reach out to property managers to see if our algorithm had gone mad or, or, if, uh, or if it was really true. Cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks for, for sharing the screen. Yeah. Um, so the, the conclusion from the, these graphs, like these graphs, as you said, right, I should be, we should be looking at the two lines where the rate's converging again, which shows that apparently it's, it's selling for the price it should be selling for, I'd say. And second one, you said for, when I look, for example, the, the bookings last seven days, for example, uh, or last, last three days, if I look out, maybe I guess out there in the future, I can see maybe weekends in, I don't know, September, or like uh, where people are still booking, right? They are, uh, could be, uh, I never know in the US, is it Labor Day or is it, uh, uh, it's Labor Day weekend, right? In the Memorial Day weekend in September? Yeah, Labor Day. Every day weekend, yeah, that first weekend in September. <laughs> so I guess, I guess there's probably booking still ha booking still happening for for Labor Day weekend, for example. Yeah? And that a tool like this enables uh, probably managed to see okay for those weekends there's still bookings happening. So if I've lowered my prices, just lowered everything across the board, or you're thinking maybe I should not have lowered or should not lower too much for these weekends, but I can still see there's some demand, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as well, we, we have, uh, you know, on the website for people who are interested, we, we put out a sort of a marketing page. So um, countrywide statistics are available on our website, free to, to everyone. You can check this out. There's a big button on our on our homepage that says COVID-19 data. So you can pop on there, uh, have a play. It's the Tableau dashboard. So you can look um, at what's happening in your country, in your area, um, just to, to get a better understanding of how COVID is affecting the, the industry in this in this crazy time. So well, that's amazing. Basically, there's there's uh, I talked earlier about subscription for your own local market, but here for free you have country level insight. But hey, these are the trends happening right now, even for your own country, right? Not just the world, but you can also zoom in on your own country as I can see. Yeah, yeah exactly. You can pop into to any country you want. It'll update the the stats for for your country. I've just done it now. It's going to take a while to load. I think because <laughs> it's tablet. There we go. Um, Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much for your time today. I think uh, uh, it was great again because it's really we're trying for this conference to um, uh, help property managers uh, get a sense of control to understand what's happening right now. And these graphs, for example, really give a sense of, okay, that's the bookings happening. So what's, what's been happening in the last seven days, for example, so it's like based on data, that's what I see. I can still see what's happening, for example, next September. Uh, so it's really giving a sense of things, also uh, being able to forecast the, the, when things are getting back, getting back to normal. Um, um, one uh, maybe parting thought for, for you. So if people again want to uh, have access to the data, we said the free one. There's a big button on your website about resources for COVID-19, the COVID-19 crisis. And if people want to have their own the report for their own uh, local market, what should they be doing? Yeah, so um, so yeah, you can go directly on the website. You can uh, there's a search bar at the top. Type in your city or region or area. Um, if it's not already there, uh, reach out to us. There's a there's a chat box at the very bottom. Um, and uh, and you know, if you need multiple uh, cities or something like that, please get in touch. We can offer uh, you know some some custom packages. Um, I just, I just encourage, encourage everybody to get into the data, whether that's the free data on our website at the country level, or whether that's getting into what's happening in your market. The most important thing is to stay on top of it. Um, the industry will come out the other side, um, and it's going to be those people who are ready for it when things pick back up that are that are really going to triumph um, and and are going to be there when it's all over. And unfortunately, perhaps with a little bit less competition. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point as well, because what was interesting, we talked about uh, rates and prices, but you did mention supply, right? You can really see yeah. the supply here, and it's, it's a big uh, component of, of our future. So uh, maybe less supply, supply, just maybe property managers, some won't make it sadly, or some supply will just go to you know, longer term rentals. So 
uh, we'll see how it plays out. But again, it's uh, it's been a real pleasure. Thanks for your your energy and thanks for very this clarity you're bringing to uh, understanding uh, where people should be uh, looking at right now. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Steve. Appreciate it. Welcome to you. <laughs>